Three years ago, I started a quest to create the ultimate video game that would teach non-gamers how to play any other video game. And after three years of coding, switching engines, teaching non-gamers other games, and cataloging hundreds of community tests, did I succeed in making the ultimate video game for non-gamers. Nope. <laughs> Absolutely not. But even though it's been an absolute mess for the past few years, in that chaos, I spent over a year making at least one game the best starting point for non-gamers. Even if it did mean sacrificing my old YouTube channel, and losing subscribers, and losing my friends, and losing my- The year is 2019. Life is good. For now. I struck gold on YouTube by switching my video content on Etra Games from horror game essays to videos on modding Deltarune for non-gamers, and making a training program that teaches non-gamers how to play Portal. These videos about teaching non-gamers how to play games exploded at the start of 2020. Most of the interest was funneled towards the FPS training program that I threw together in 15 hours using Unreal Engine's basic block coding. It taught non-gamers how to move, jump, look around, and shoot in a 3D space so they could play Portal. In my video about the training game, Game, I asked for feedback on it, and I received hundreds of emails talking about how non-gamers played the game and how to make things better. From that point on, I knew I wanted to make more phonics programs to teach more games and help non-gamers. Do that for five years, learn how to program along the way, revolutionize the gaming industry, and become a multi-millionaire. You know, as one does. How Ever, that pattern wasn't very sustainable. I could have made like five more videos about how your parents can play Journey, how your parents can play Gone Home, Grease, Bendy and the Ink Machine, or other short, basically, walking simulators. But I could never make a How Your Parents Can Play Hollow Knight or Breath of the Wild. Short games with basic movement worked fine as videos because the training programs before them would only take 10 to 15 minutes to beat because all it was teaching was basic movement. But any program that was longer and more complex required a longer and more complex training program before it to teach non-players the basics. And instead of making multi-hour long training programs, I said, why not take all that effort and make one giant training program that teaches every genre of game instead? But problem, I didn't know how to actually program. And the one training program I did have was so resource heavy that it set most of my subscribers' computers on fire and was running on Steam VR for some reason. So I hired another university friend that also barely knew how to program and got to work on making a small training game to teach a small hour and a half long 3D platformer game called Journey. At the time, Journey was already known for being the best game to teach non-gamers, so this would be easy. Instead of using Unreal Engine 4 to make the training program, we'd use the lightweight Unity game engine. We would make the Journey training program to test out the Unity game engine, and move on to making the mega non-gamer game in a month or two. After all, we didn't need something pretty. We just needed to make something functional. And how hard could that be? So did you guys know that learning a game engine properly is hard, especially when Unity has no character templates for you to use, you have to use third-party assets, and the sky keeps turning pink for no reason that humans could possibly comprehend? Okay, so we were two months behind schedule and already put over 60 hours in trying to learn how Unity works. At this point, we learned how impossible our dreams of a multi-genre teaching game was at our skill level, and instead aimed to make a big FPS teaching game after the journey program. In the meantime, I stitched together a video from my high school senior thesis to keep the non-gamer hype going. And it's exclusively recommended by the 2020 meme, nice bro. Huh. That should cause no issues in the future and is no cause for concern. But hey, 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 about the future, it looks mostly bright. This new pandemic thing has made it impossible for me to work with any of my planned hired test subjects. However, Team Etra now has a two week long super spring break. And during this time, we can finish up the journey program, start testing, and then move on to bigger projects. Three months have passed. Team Etra has fallen apart in the pandemic. My non-gamer test subjects were gone. I was all alone. However, I finally did it. After remaking it from scratch again, I made a barely functional teaching game that would help non-gamers play Journey. 
There was no music, no visual theme, no sound effects, but the game now existed. While working on the game, I spent two months reaching out to dozens of YouTube creators who could run a complete non-gamer parent or loved one through my game and then the seven stages of journey, the proclaimed best game for non-gamers. Finally, a bite. Author and YouTuber Alex Socratetris Holmes, another ally interested in this game literacy, ran his mom through my barely functional program, and barely functional did not cut it. I can't swim. <laughs> you probably can't swim. There's a big wall in front of me. Mm. It's probably water on the other side. So what do you see in front of you? A wall. Yeah, what's on the wall? Rocks. <laughs> Pebbles. What's on the ground in front of you? Grass what's on that grass. So these two trash cans. It took Alex's mom twice as long to get through my journey program than it took most people to get through my shorter FPS program. However, the program still taught our first test subject, movement, blips, camera controls, and jumping like it was supposed to. But there was another problem. Journey was not the best game for non-gamers. Of course, there was the stuff I already fixed, like the game not teaching players how to move their camera, blip, or jump, but what I didn't expect was how confusing the game was to Alex's mom at times. Your objective and journey is simply get to the mountain, but to get there, there are smaller objectives, which were confusing at times. For example, in stage two, where you need to build a giant bridge, she would activate some cloths and not pay attention to the bridge being assembled, because her character was gone. Where did the little red guy go? Without the red guy, she can't do anything. What is a cutscene? What is happening? Also, speaking of cloths, Journey uses a variety of these unnamed cloths to make characters unlock paths, jump higher, and recharge their jump, but each of these separate mechanics all conformed to a homogenous blob in our first player's mind. But the biggest issue that caused the most pain throughout the entire run was jumping. But Atra, you taught Alex's mom how to jump in various ways in your training program. Yes, I did. However, a problem occurs when after the first of the seven stages, Journey only tests players on their ability to move around and do this little blip thing. The game doesn't test the player's ability to jump at all until the final three stages, which meant by the time she got here, she was an hour into her run and mostly forgot how to jump. Also, these jumps she was making were at different vertical angles. All the jumps my training program taught were jumps to platforms of the same height of the character. So in early jumps like this, she did well, but when the jumps involved any verticality or angles, she failed. And overall, she spent 40 minutes failing different jumps and journey. It took her about three and a half hours to beat the one and a half hour long game. Four hours overall if you add in the 25 minutes she spent on the training program. But surprisingly, despite all that, she still really enjoyed Journey. Thank you for creating Journey. It was great, Alex. I had a lot of fun. And that was very promising. But oh no, what's that? The Etra hasn't posted in three months alarm. Ah! Uh I just need to post something, anything about the first test, and give the subscribers the revised program later, because the last video I posted completely flopped. But just for the first script, me and Alex couldn't fit our detailed findings under 51 minutes. I cried a bit, then saw instead of one video, I had to turn the first test into two videos and have a third part with another unknown YouTuber coming later. Was this a smart idea? Should I just give up and move on to what was now a teaching non-gamers platformers project, since I was all alone and downscoping? My subscribers pushed me to stay with the plan. I posted the first two videos over the course of a month, and the alarm stopped. Was this a mistake? How much time would making the third video cost? We're good. We're good. We're chill. We're chill. We're only seven months behind our original schedule now. Ah! Right after the journey videos, I spent the next full month reworking my training program from the ground up again after learning even more about Unity. Because at the time, I started teaching Unity as a part-time job. Funny how those things work out. I was able to live stream some of the development at least. The entire map was redone. I taught players how to work with the blip cloths, the bridges, and how to jump straight, vertically, diagonally, and double jumpedly. With chat, we even made a guide called Light Buddy to lead the player through the level. Then they made a cult for Light Buddy. Then they started offering sacrifices to light. Now, since the first run of Journey went so poorly in my eyes, I was terrified to send my now complete training program over to the next YouTuber, Jib Smart, without really knowing if the run would be better. So before that, I wanted non-gamers to run through my training program so I could make it better. But surprise, the pandemic was still raging. 
so I had to clunkily send the game online to 11 different wonderful volunteer subscribers who all recorded their footage at varying qualities and needed different accommodations. Mainly, I need to create a whole system for supporting every controller I could think of and supporting every language my subscribers translated the game to. While waiting for the test results, I worked on the non-gamer platformer game and even consulted Patreon expert Xavier Bates and got a full page set up for Ludobots. So once the final journey video was posted, I could spend the next few months and next summer working on devlogs for that new project. After making many small changes to the journey training program and making a printable guide that taught things journey isn't clear about, I sent both over to Jib Smart, who did a silent, unguided test with his mother. And... Obsession arose. With the new training program and the guide, his mom beat the game almost perfectly. There were still some snags and a few jumping sections, but even with that, she had a great time, which is something that wasn't consistent with my tests on Deltarune or Portal. The test subjects had some fun and a lot of frustration, but here, Alex's mom and Jib's mom still had fun at the end of the day. Then there was her time. Exactly three hours and 23 seconds. We were done. We were done. We were supposed to be done. Me and Jib wrote out, storyboarded, recorded, and audio edited one final 30 minute video. But I just couldn't bring myself to finish it. I couldn't post it. Something was wrong with my channel. View counts were lowering as people were not interested in journeying as much as other games, but there was something more, something that I couldn't identify quite yet. I talked to YouTube staff and even freaking Mr. Beast on a private Discord, and it seemed that my channel was tainted with something I couldn't nail down, because all the recommendations on all my last videos were all over the place. I also had major doubts with the platforming project at this point, which relied on my waning community support so I reached out to various sources to ask for any help and direction. At this point, I fully accepted what I wasn't happy with. That time. The three hours and 23 seconds on the combined games. I knew that the non-gamer experience could be compressed further, frustration could be lowered, and players could have a better time. I couldn't just move on from what could be a great finished project onto something that I had doubts on. So, I canceled the new two-part video set with Jib Smart. I reached out to more subscribers for more testing. I did it. After combing through more hours upon hours of submitted playthroughs all alone and improving my training program bit by bit, I finally reached it. All players playing through my program and journey got an average time of 2 hours, 57 minutes, and 25 seconds. This is just 4 minutes off of Jib's parents' playthrough, but I also learned patterns about how age doesn't really affect non-gamers, rather relationship. Girlfriends who watched their boyfriends play did much better than parents who didn't care. Completing in one sitting is optimal. I could now combine the four previous video scripts into one mega video of how your parents can play Journey in just three hours. And yours can too, all you have to do is follow these five steps. Download both games, print out the training guide, turn off your system's Wi-Fi, have your loved one play through my free training program and journey with a controller in whatever language you want, and give your player the revised training guide once they get their scarf. And based off my year of testing into this topic, anyone with little to no gaming experience should be able to beat this game and more importantly, have a great time in just three hours. And this was huge to me. It was finally something I could fully recommend to anyone looking to get their loved ones into video games. There are no mods, no game commands, no lists of important things or necessary explanations, but just by following these five steps, any non-gamer can play a complete, wonderful video game in less time than movie night. And it's all because of the wonderful volunteers, translators, artists, and testers who helped me along the way. With Journey, we now have a solid hook to show non-gamers this is what video games can be. A new art form that can be beautiful.
Also, in the background, I completely reworked the direction of the platformer game, a cry for help I sent was noticed by a kind doctoral student, and we worked on making a funded fighting game I shoved many, many hours into. I also remade my FPS training program for school with new language support systems, and I got invited to a game dev collective in Sweden. Summer 2021 was planned to be perfect. I just need to post the journey video real quick, and it's my lowest rated video ever. Uh... Hey, you know, you know, at least two people submitted test results. Thank you, Lenatra Chop and Kevco. Very cool. And with that, the entire year felt very wasted. Oh, also, right when the video flopped, the Sweden game dev trip fell apart because the virus decided to have new anime forms. After many months more work, I canceled the fighting game, and then my mom started dying. She's okay now. It was a misdiagnosis of early onset dementia. It only cost a few months of going to lose parent trauma, pain, and agony. Now, during this time, I didn't just lie down and die like it seems like I did on my first channel. Instead, I dug really deep into what was killing my old YouTube channel, and I finally found answers. I'll go into more details on that channel eventually, but the chaos was mostly related to having older videos in a different niche, and that's why I'm over here now, on Etra's Games for Non-Gamers, where, as you may have seen, I didn't start entirely from scratch. I remade older videos and put pieces of my old channel on an extra Etra channel because I had a revelation. Over the course of this whole non-gamer teaching adventure, I've been cursed with two problems. First, I don't have the time or resources to make a big game that teaches an entire genre like I tried to with the platformer and fighting game. Second, my training programs start from scratch and can only teach certain simple concepts, which means the games that are played afterwards have to be simple. When working on the fighting game, it hit me. I can solve both of these problems by violently crashing them into each other. What I need to do is make a chain of phonics book games and games to play with them that act as a big game that teaches an entire genre. And where does this non-gamer curriculum begin? Din din din, right at Journey. Cause I refuse to let this year of effort by my volunteer testers, translators, and artists just go to waste. This is an incredibly smart decision, and not just the sunk cost fallacy. After Journey, then the curriculum will move on to Toki Time Trials, then Portal, and then branch to some secret games from there. And to help that move along even faster, I just opened a Patreon, which is linked below. In that, you'll get early access to my programs, and the more support I get there, the more hours I can spend on these projects, instead of working at various part-time jobs to pay for my student rent and living costs. I posted a whole separate video about that, and also I posted all the never-before-seen Journey video parts and discussions on my Extra Etra channel, by the way, if you want all that detailed info. Now, this new curriculum project starting with Journey sounds great, but after four canceled mega projects, why do I feel confident that this one is actually going to be completed? Well, there's one final component, just one little thing that differentiates this project from all the others I've worked on that should make failure, air quotes here, impossible. But sadly, I can't share that yet, because one thing I didn't get to mention is I got to work with some scary third parties on projects that fell through, and I'm a bit scared to speak on certain things. But in the next video, which is hopefully up here somewhere, I'll tell you all about the new curriculum game, anti-failure strategies, and how you can help me test the new project by having your non-gamer loved ones play through it so I can steal their data. Now that this channel switching nightmare is over, I'm really looking forward to what we can do next. I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.